Heights water are in the third phase, and this time it was not the charm. Pres residents have been without clean water for 18 days now after two chemicals used in Fairchild Air Force Base's fire training were found in the city's water supply. Today, they announced it's still not safe to drink or cook with. Now, we'll send it over to KXY Force Caroline Flynn. She's working for you tonight. She joins us in studio with the latest. Caroline? Well, Casey, officials were confident today the water ban would be lifted. Unfortunately, the latest batch of tests showed otherwise. Residents of Airway Heights who were compliant today were more worried and frustrated with what this means for their health and future in the area. Flushing 25 million gallons of water from the system was not enough to lift the ban on drinking water in Airway Heights. Of the 20 samples taken at the end of last week, 15 detected no contaminants, while four were above the health advisory ranging from 85 parts per trillion to 141 parts per trillion. What that means is that our flushing program has been working. It just means we have to continue to do some more flushing. The improvement, though, is doing little to calm residents' fears. With each pass day they are growing more concerned about their future in airway heights it makes you wonder about staying in this area to live in airway heights with the water problem and how this has affected their health it's getting frustrating you know especially with how long we've lived here uh, I've been here over 14 and a half years and concerned for the long-term effects of this the law firm of Perkett and Trotman recently filed a federal tort claim on behalf of one client who has property damage by the pollution and have been fielding more than a dozen calls from people with serious health issues that they can almost directly trace to the water in Airway Heights. People have lived there for a long time and never known why they got sick so much, why there's infertility problems. These are all really serious things that we're looking at and it's going to take some investigation to get the, to connect those, but honest, the, the surface is a lot to be worried about. They are working hard to untangle the facts of who knew what and when they knew it as well as what kind of warnings were given. The transparency goes hand in hand with accountability and people who um, suffered because of this through no fault of their own mm -hmm. deserve compensation for being damaged without doing anything wrong. Fairchild's Wing Commander Colonel Ryan Samuelson gave us a statement this afternoon that says, we understand the concerns that affected community members have, and we provided information necessary for them to file claims. The property and personal injury claims that Fairchild Air Force Base has received, and any future claims the installation may receive related to the PFOS and PFOA matter, will be forwarded to the Air Force Legal Operations Agency in accordance with Air Force policy. Now, the plan going forward is to flush the system all weekend, collect samples Monday morning, and hopefully be able to lift the ban by Wednesday when results are due back. Live in studio, Caroline Flynn, KXLY4 News. Caroline, thank you. An important story. So many people waiting for that.